specific ideas will become real companies that will make money and will create value also out there. Whether and that can happen whether or not you win the competition or not. But of course, it will be a help for those who win. Good luck with that and congratulations to VentureCup. <laughs> My name is Hama from Team HealthBridge coming from Canada, where we tackle the language barrier in healthcare. We were named the social winner and the overall winner of University Startup World Cup. We won the first place at the environmental category, and we are so proud of that because that means we are on the right way for saving the environment or for better future for all of us. Yeah, a while back we had Danish startup and we're pleased to announce that we won the health category of 2019. We're working with the most common hospital acquired infection in the world. We are a Germany-based startup Amapro and we just won the category economic at the University Startup World Cup. We make prostheses more affordable by 3D printing them.此次大赛共收到 
分获初创组和成长组的全球总冠军。Forskning, viden, innovation, det er grundlaget for menneskehedens fremskridt. Fra første gang et menneske fandt ud af at bruge en pin og en sten til at gå på jagt, og frem til udviklingen af selvkørende biler i dag. Vi er defineret af vores evne til at finde, men i særdeleshed også vores evne til at bruge de opfindelser til at skabe et bedre liv. For eksempel kan vi spore de første optegnelser af opfindelsen af konservståser tilbage til Holland i 1772. En fantastisk opfindelse i sig selv, men det første patent på en dåseåbner, åbner, det kom først i 1855. Det tog altså omkring 75 år at realisere det fulde potentiale i anmeldelsen af konservsdåser. En dåseåbner, det er måske ikke resultatet af meget dyb forskning, men det er en god idé, og den gør jo alt andet lige, at konservsdåsen bliver meget mere nyttig. Både opfindelse og nyttiggørelse er afgørende for menneskeheden. Både viden og innovation er essentielle ingredienser til en bedre verden. Og derfor er det ekstra godt, at vi i dag er samlet over hele kloden for at sætte fokus på netop det. Forskning, iværksætteri, internationalt samarbejde og samhandel. Det vægter vi højt i Danmark. Det investerer vi i i Danmark, fordi vi ved, at nye idéer, der bliver omsat til forretning, er vigtigere end guld eller olie. Jeg er utrolig glad for at få lov til at byde velkommen til University Startup World Cup. Og jeg er også meget glad for, at Danmark og Kina går sammen for at skabe og forstærke relationer, der kan komme startups og det samlede erhvervsliv til gode. Og jeg sætter stor pris på, at det er en prioritet fra kinesisk side at støtte studenter, startups og internationale relationer. I værksættere og forskere som jer skaber innovation, vækst og nye arbejdspladser overalt i verden. I skaber fremtidens virksomheder og produkter, sådan som vi i Danmark har set det med alt fra vindmøller og legoklodser til medicin og cirkulationspumper. Og et arrangement, som i dag er et godt eksempel på, hvordan vi kan sætte fokus på udviklingen af innovative løsninger og nye forretningsmodeller. En stærk iværksætterkultur det er afgørende for, at I som iværksætter får de bedste rammer for at udvikle jeres virksomhed. De bedste rammer til at lade en god idé spire, til at blive til et egentligt erhvervseventyr, det understøtter vi i Danmark, og det skal vi også understøtte på internationalt plan. Jeg synes jo naturligvis, at I skal tage jeres gode idéer med til Danmark, men for nu er jeg tilfreds med, at I vil dele dem med os i dag. Så fra min side en stor tak til VentureCop for at samle os. Tak til jer alle sammen for at deltage, og selvfølgelig et kæmpe stort held og lykke, til de startups, der i dag skal kæmpe om at blive kåret som verdens bedste. My name is Haman from Team HealthQuest, coming from Canada, where we tackle the language barrier in healthcare. We were named the social winner and the overall winner of University Startup World Cup. We won the first place at the environmental category, and we are so proud of that because that means we are on the right way for saving the environment or for a better future for all of us. Yeah, a while back, we had Danish startup. We're pleased to announce that we won the health category of 2019. We're working with most common hospital-acquired infection in the world. 
We are a Germany-based startup, Amapro, and we just won the category Economic at the University Startup World Cup. We make prostheses more affordable by 3D printing them. Please mute your phone. Our event will start soon. First of all, I will invite Ms. Zhao Hong, the moderator today.
your excellency. Distinguished guests and the alumni, dear colleague and the student, and old friends at present and online, good morning and good afternoon. On behalf of SDC of UCAS, I would like to extend my warm welcome to all of you to attend this ceremony, which is University Startup World Cup 2021 lunch ceremony. My name is Zhao Hong. I'm the Dean of SDC, and it is a great, great honor to introduce the distinguished guests in SDC building with us. They are His Ex uh, Excellency Tom Mueller, Ambassador of Denmark to China. His Excellency Sadas Chirji, UN Resident Coordinator, China. Ms. Madonna's uh, Jeremy, Science and Educational Counselor, Royal Norway Embassy in China. Mr. Ho Tsai, Robert, Counselor, Science and Technology Innovation Division, Embassy of Brazil in China. Welcome. Mr. Ho Beck, Country Representative, EuroX China. <clears throat> Mr. Martin Holtz, Executive Director, Innovation Center, Denmark, Shanghai. <clears throat> Mr. Thomas Hansen, Innovation Center, Denmark, Shanghai, Counselor at the Consulate General of Denmark. Ms. Isabella Lee, Advisor, Public Affairs and Science and Innovation at LAE Embassy, Beijing. We are also honored to have Ms. Wang Yanfen, Executive Vice President of the University of Chinese Academic Science. Mr. Chen Rui, Vice Director of the National Community Centers for Science and Technology, CAST. And Mr. Zhao Bao Jun, Vice Governor of Huairo District. Mr. Xie Yong from the International Affairs Office, and also he's the Director of the International Affairs Office of UCAS. We do have a many Chinese colleagues here from the UCAS because time is limited. So uh, can I also introduce some of our uh, VIP person, Professor Li Jijun, Associate Dean of the Economic and Management from Tsinghua University. And also Ms. Wu Jie, Executive Director of Venture Cup China. Actually, we also have uh, many VIP person on then to attend this ceremony. So time is uh, short. So I'm going to move to the main section. So nowadays we can see innovation is the trend of the world. And uh, can I keep going? Okay. I'd like to say a few words before the formal announcement. To promote social innovate, young people play a very important role. How, to, how do they understand the innovation and realize the innovation through the growth? And the purpose of this seminar is to give this innovation idea a chance to meet and also even to build a global platform for communication and cooperation to strengthen in deep collaboration in university 
innovation and entrepreneurship collaboration among all the countries. So in two, in 2021, we are honored to withdraw, to withdraw the lunch ceremony, this very important moment at our SDC building. I would like to express my appreciation for all the efforts from all the stakeholder participants through our continued efforts up to now. We have seen a bunch of a high quality project gain a wide popularity and recognition. Lots of the intelligence have been awarded, which also give us a more innovation uh, and motivation to move forward. I am so confident that we will stay true to our mission to promote young collaboration in innovation and entrepreneurship collaboration to create a better future for human beings. So now I would like to invite Mr. Thomas Muro, Embassy of the uh, Denmark to China with us. I would like to invite him to do the keynote speech. Thomas, please. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the very kind introduction and uh, honorable Mr. Chajayi, uh, Dr. Wang Yanfen, uh, Mr. Jiao Baojun, distinguished guests, dear students and faculty, ladies and gentlemen, and good afternoon, uh, China, and good morning to Europe as well. It is really a honor for me uh, to join the University Startup World Cup 2021 launch ceremony. And today we bring together entrepreneurs, uh, university leaders, investors, students, to celebrate how new ideas and ingenuity can change our business communities and the world of tomorrow. And we do that, ladies and gentlemen, at uh, the Sino Danish uh, Center for Education and Research, what we call the SDC. And this beautiful building uh, we are sitting in is a donation from the Danish Industry Foundation. And it houses my country's most ambitious bilateral collaboration within education and research. It stands as an example of the collaboration between the eight Danish universities, the Chinese Academy of Science and the University of the Chinese Academy of Science as well. In the times before the pandemic, half, I would say half of the students in these seats in front of me would be from Danish universities. I think there are some available seats, so we, we save them for the Danes when they come back. Hopefully, this will soon be the case again, uh, as I know that our students and faculty are longing to come back. And to be very honest, we miss you a lot here in China. The STC collaboration was born out of the belief that Danish and Chinese students should not only learn about each other's cultures, languages, and habits. They should also learn to work together on concrete societal challenges within water, food, public management, just to mention a few. Thus, I think this building provides an outstanding setting to the launch of this World Cup for student entrepreneurship. The STC is home to very energetic and entrepreneurial young people. You are, dear students, the entrepreneurs of today, but hopefully also the business leaders of tomorrow. Entrepreneurship is of great importance to any country in this world. Not only does it prompt social change that makes communities more vibrant, inclusive, and secure, it also drives innovation and job creation. That is among the reasons why Denmark has an innovation center in Shanghai supporting exactly entrepreneurship and commercial innovation between Denmark 
and China. In Denmark, we want to embed the spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship in our culture and in our daily lives. And we believe that entrepreneurship is not only about starting a business. More significantly, it's, it is a mindset that everyone needs to acquire. It spurs personal growth by allowing you to act decisively to overcome challenges and shoulder responsibility for the outcomes. And we need to cultivate, cultivate an entrepreneurial mindset to the greatest possible extent. In Denmark, uh, the entrepreneurial education starts in the early childhood, as children are brought up to focus on self-reliance, team spirit, and creative approaches to problems. But we need to go much further. And therefore, I'm glad to see our involvement with the USWC platform. This event brings together student entrepreneurs from different countries to network, to grow, to compete, and to learn. The diversity of this collaboration is quite fascinating. And honestly, I cannot wait to see the pitches uh, from teams with different backgrounds and perspectives as we all, as, the fruitful, as well as the fruitful outcome of this year's uh, competition. Since the pandem pandemic uh, is still part uh, of life around the world, the restrictions of global traveling have not been fully lifted. So uh, unfortunately, um, most of the teams cannot attend in person. Like so many other events, this launch ceremony, as well as the actual finals in the autumn will be held in an online and offline format. But the pandemic, it's challenging. It, and it's challenging us in ways we have never imagined before. However, it will not put a stop to the exchange of ideas, innovation, and cross-cultural learning as well. So I am positive that with global cooperation, we will navigate through these difficulties and successfully find a path toward a better, greener, and healthier future. With these words, let me thank all participants and I would like to wish the USWC 2021 a huge success and all of you, dear students, a very rewarding and unforgettable experience. Thank you so much. Shishi. Thank you very much for Thomas uh, Mueller's wonderful speech. And please do take a seat. The growth of SDC cannot do without government support. So the future of the growth of SDC also need the joint efforts of both sides from the both government. So looking forward to keep going to support SDC. And we are going to play a very uh, important international platform for international collaboration. So now is let's invite the next speaker. Uh, he is Excellency. And uh, Sadas Chardi, UN Resident Coordinator, China, please. Ambassador Muller, Dr. Wang, Ms. Zhao, distinguished people present here, ladies and gentlemen, and particularly the students present here. I'm truly honored to be here with all of you today because uh, I suddenly feel I've come back to Denmark because I lived there for, for uh, some time uh, during my work in the United Nations. And looking at the architectural splendor uh, reminded me that uh, I've suddenly come back to a place where I can actually see the hotbed of technology and innovation actually happening as I walk through the halls here. 
you know, the sustainable development goals are right in front of us. And it's also called the decade of action. We have just nine years left. The urgency that is warranted to achieve the sustainable development goals for human prosperity needs the urgency of science, technology, innovation coming together to give it the boost, to allow it to leapfrog. What COVID-19 has done suddenly is laid bare the inequalities that we witness across the world, within countries, between countries, even the most advanced healthcare systems all over the world, which we took for granted, could not keep up to the tsunami that we were confronted with. But at the same time, what we saw that the world responses it responded robustly. It was able to come up with vaccines which normally take years to develop. And here we have China, the United States, the United Kingdom, India, Russia coming up with vaccines that are actually not only saving lives, but also giving us the reassurance that if the entire world were to get immunized, we would be in a very, very good place. So I would give you a real life example of what we tried in Kenya a public-private partnership which brought together six companies, Huawei, Philips from the Netherlands, Merck from the United States, Safaricom from Kenya, GlaxoSmithKline from the UK and the Kenya Healthcare Federation. We came together in 2014 to deal with an urgency of very high maternal mortality ratios or simply put high maternal deaths in Kenya in six of the highest burden counties. A partnership between the United Nations and the private sector actually led to a one third reduction of these maternal deaths. Why? It is because we allowed big data, technology and innovation and public private partnerships to converge around an idea that it was possible to do it, which got us invited to the World Economic Forum in Davos in 2017, and which propelled Kenya to say, if we could do it in six of these most difficult places, why can't we achieve universal health coverage, which as you know, is SDG3. That really became a defining moment of how public-private partnerships would work to accelerate the technology and innovation that we need and harness the big data that informs proper programmatic robustness. So therefore, what we found I was recently at the War Forum, and there are four deficits, ladies and gentlemen, that confront us, in order, which actually are going to impede our progress towards the sustainable development goals. The first deficit is a health deficit, and it's clear. The second is an infrastructure deficit. We need to connect the world. An Africa free trade area would be impossible if Africa is not adequately connected just the way Europe is. So therefore, there's an infrastructure deficit, not just in roads and bridges, but in terms, of, in terms of water systems and all those things that accompany global prosperity. The third is a green deficit. What COVID has also done is laid bare that we are in front of a climate crisis, which perhaps is an existentialist crisis. And fourth, again, COVID showed us that there's a massive digital divide in humanity, and we have to correct the digital deficit. So we have to address these four deficits in order to, in order to leapfrog or give velocity to the sustainable development goals. But above all, I'm so pleased to see that you've got the SDG5 board right on top, because women, ladies and gentlemen, are the pillar of social progress anywhere in the world. And women in STEM, at my own university in Princeton, the Manhattan Project had a top class Chinese scientist in the 1940s who taught at my school for close to seven years. There is nothing that should be holding women behind. So I'm delighted to see a large number of, I'm sorry, I put on a timer to make sure I was within the five minute time, <laughs> to see a large number of ladies who are here that represent the ethos of what we want to do. Uh, to. So I want to commend the government of, 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 of Denmark and, and, and the Chinese Academy of Sciences for this really innovative partnership. I'm delighted to see this. And I can just assure you that as the UN family, would, we would very much want to integrate into this because we want to share best practices that can actually be taken from China to many other parts of the developing world in order to give that kind of sustenance and energy that we need to achieve the SDGs.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your excellent keynote speech. Now I would like to invite Executive Vice President of University of Chinese Economic Science, Professor Wang Yinfen to launch keynote speech. Welcome. Mr. Thomas Muller, Your Excellency, Mr. Sitat Chaji, I, I try to pronounce it correctly. Mr. Chen Ri, Mr. Jiao Baojun, Mr. Magnus Yoram, Mr. Yongse Roboto, the Android fellow, also try my best to, to. Dear colleagues from uh, Novo Foundation, Danish University Alliance, Innovation Center Denmark, Nordic Innovation Center, Tsinghua University, Rick Javik University, University of Belgrade, and the National University of Science and Technology, Zimbabwe. Dear friends, good afternoon. And also friends from online, good morning. On behalf of University of Chinese Academy of Sciences, I would like to extend my sincere welcome to you all. The Sino Danish, as uh, our ambassador mentioned, is for the education and the research, is a platform which was built by the University of Chinese Academy of Sciences, the Danish government, and eight Danish public universities. It aims to cultivate high level research talents with international horizon and interdisciplinary background. Since its establishment, SDC has achieved remarkable results, including almost 200 students registered at this platform and two thirds got their degree, finished their thesis and bring together their idea over or across the culture to build up the, the bridge for the, the groups. In future, UCAS will leverage these advantages from SDC program and extend them to cooperation with the larger Europe and the globe. Actively explore an educational system that is student oriented and individualized and fulfill the mission of a university, pioneering in building an international highland of innovative talents, including the students who sitting here and also the students who still in Denmark and Europe. As pointed, was pointed by President Xi Jinping nowadays, we are facing the surge tide of a new scientific revolution and the industrial transformation. It is the common aspiration of all countries to engage in science, tech, and cultural exchanges and promote cooperation on innovative among youthful researchers in whose hands the future of science and technology lies. The participants today should exchange ideas learn from each other, build a solid foundation of friendship and strengthen the bond of cooperation. The young scientists should give full play to their ambitions and realize their dreams so as to lead social and economic development with science tech innovation and create a better future for human development. The universities start up World Cup is one of the worst influential events on innovation and entrepreneurship. It is an important platform for the students, for the young researchers, for the scientists' future, for selecting and incubating startup companies, a bridge of promoting innovation and entrepreneurship exchanges 
for youngsters around the world and a key link for the integration of industry, education, and research. Hopefully, the faculty and the students can take these advantages of this event, unless innovative thinking, engage in more entrepreneurial practices, and be devoted in the trend of mass innovation and entrepreneurship. I would like to thank all parties who make a contribution for today's event. And once again, express my sincere welcome and gratitude to our participants who came from afar and also who are not able to be present, but are joining online. I wish the University Startup World Cup 2021 launch ceremony and the International University Innovation and Entrepreneurship Collaboration Seminar a great success. Before I finish my speech, I have to say I like it. you too, the ideas. Innovation is not from the young scientists, from, not from the, the university, from a guy, a people who is still in, in his early age as a child is innovation, is uh, nature of human being. And also I like uh, uh, your ideas about the SDC, uh, no SDC, uh, SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. So I'm the, the researcher uh, working on this area. And also I agree with you about the four nature for the property or four uh, uh, de definition. Where is the right for human being to get uh, food, energy, clear water, and also the second is about the inf infrastructure and the green, also the digital world. Most important is gender issue. So I work at the Easy Mode International Center for Mountain Development, which located in Kathmandu in Nepal, and also there the Hindu Kush Himalaya region. There, water, clean water, energy, foods are deficient. And also the gender issue is very serious. We, we prefer, we work together for the future, not only for the development, but for the right of the, the people in some area who still needs the, the help, who still need the SDG in the next 20 or 40, 50 years. Thank you. Thank you for your coming. Thank you for your listening. Thank you very much for our executive vice president of UCAS keynote speech. And Professor Wang Yanfen is not only the executive vice president of UCAS, she's also doing a lot of uh, academic research in the SDGs. So it's a very hot topic in UCAS. So girls of SDC cannot do without the ongoing support of the UCAS. So thank you very much. So now I would like to invite Mr. Chen Rui, the Vice Director of the National Communication Center of for Science and Technology CAST to do the keynote speech. Thank you. Distinguished uh, charity, His Excellency Thomas Muller, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's my great honor on behalf of the University of Chinese Academy of Science to attend the launching ceremony of the 2021 University Startup World Cup. And I wish we can achieve a complete success. Premier Li Keqiang once proposed the entrepreneurship and innovation activity in China. And we establish our innovation week, which generated a new round of enthusiasm for entrepreneurship and innovation. 
And also, we have organized a startup and entrepreneurship innovation week for five years in a row. Since it was first organized in 2017, we achieved a success in Paris, Norland, Norway, and uh, over 100 cities. We have organized more than over 200 activities covering a lot of events, competition, dialogue, symposium, and other events. And we also invited the ambassadors from many countries, as well as the innovation organizations from the other world and the renowned international companies such as Microsoft. And over 1,000 representatives attended our events, demonstrating our progress uh, and uh, innovation. And it also helped China to go global in entrepreneurship and innovation. So we are promoting a dual circulation model. And we are trying to uh, share the innovation and progress with the rest of the world. And Denmark is the second Western country that established diplomatic ties with China. And it's also the country established the all around strategic relation with China. Since the establishment of our ties, we have strengthened our uh, cooperation in education, environment uh, protection, as well as academy. And in 2015, the World Cup startup was started up in Copenhagen and is one of the most influential events for the two countries. For many years, development has become a platform for incubating successful startups and selecting excellent talent. And it's become an important platform that promotes communication and exchange between the two sides and also promoted integration of research academy and university and enterprises. And in 2017, the World Cup was organized in China and it's become one of the important overseas events in China. It demonstrated our innovation creativity of Chinese universities. And the cost is include many association of science and technologies in local areas. And we are covering 210 cities. And we cover 170 million science and technology workers last year in order to cope with the uh, epidemic and make achievements in science and technology, we started to launch a platform to integrate the innovation and match the supply and demand. We hope we can explore uh, the enterprise demands and establish an uh, industrial chain. And by the incentive and uh, building such a platform, uh, we are uh, developing an international platform that reach more people and serve the market and the world better. And this year, uh, we are doing more work to promote innovation, entrepreneurship, energize more energy uh, to this platform. I hope in the future, all walks of life from the two parties can exchange more, communicate more, and um, grasp the opportunity of uh, the uh, innovation and so that we can have an integrated development between China and uh, Denmark. And we also hope next year, our communication center can serve us better in terms of promoting innovation, communication exchange and promoting the establishment of a community of shared future for mankind. And lastly, wish today's event a complete success. Thank you very much. Chen Rui, and Chen Rui is also alumni of the Chinese Academic Science. So thank you for your keynote speech. And now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Jiao Baojun, the Vice Governor of Huairo District to launch keynote speech, please. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before my opening speech, I would like to ask you a question. You know who, have you ever heard the person who have not go to the Great Wall is not a good man? Who said that, do you know? It's 
This was from October 1935. It was said by Chairman Mao. And he compiled a poem. He wants, he is a great person with great passion for the development of China. So a great man reaching the great wall means the person who are working hard to pursue their dream. And I hope all the people attending the World Cup are all great people that have reached the great wall. And I would like to share a good news with you. Just before the launching event, I was very honored to accompany His Excellency Moller, Thomas Moller to the Great Wall, Mu Tianyi Great Wall. Moller said it was the first time for him to arrive at the Great Wall in China. Congratulations to Moller. You are a great man. And meanwhile, I would also like to invite all the friends from all over China to come to China, to go to the Great Wall and be the great man. Distinguished uh, Thomas Moller, Ambassador of Denmark to China, His Excellency Xi Jinping, Chatterjee, UN Resident Coordinator China. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. In the dream, beautiful dream, we are gathering here in the beautiful campus to witness the launching ceremony of University Startup World Cup 2021. On behalf of Huairo District Government and Huairo people, I would like to extend my sincere warm welcome to all the participants coming from afar and at home. And I would like to thank you for your support that support the development of Beijing. As an important uh, functional area of Beijing, Huairo district uh, has a long history and beautiful natural landscape and a great atmosphere for innovation. So it is a great district and capital of culture, cinema, and tourism. It's a great city that is uh, very a great with a great climate. So with the uh, leadership of our government, we are focusing on the economic development of this district and promoting the international uh, pro pro progress. And Huairo is a pearl of China. And uh, we are demonstrating new vitality now. And uh, this University Startup World Cup covers many areas, including artificial intel intelligence, etc. So this echoes with our development goal for the high-tech development here, taking the advantage of the platform uh, with the support of the innovators and entrepreneurs and their uh, pursuit of science. I think more progress will be achieved and more uh, achievements, innovative results will be delivered. Ladies and gentlemen and distinguished guests, so a single achievement is not enough. We need enable everyone to participate and to achieve their potential. To move on and to encourage everyone to tap into their potential is very important. I do hope that more people can step up into our high-tech uh, city and uh, engage in the incubation of the projects. We will try to improve our innovation policy and give more support for the entrepreneurship activities and build Huayro into a beautiful environment, a land for innovation. And we will jointly usher in a new page for the development of the city. And uh, finally, I wish this conference a huge success and I wish you a pleasant stay in Huayro. Mr. Jiao Baojun's keynote speech, actually all our Danish professor and the Chinese professor, we are looking forward to do more collaboration program in Huayros and City. Thank you. Now we will begin the university startup World Cup talk. And I will pass my microphone to Mr. 
Morten Anderson, the CEO of the Venture Cup Denmark, who will be the moderator in this session. Morten, please. Thank you very much. Very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen team guests locally in Beijing and around the world. Thank you very much, everyone, for participating today. We're very excited that you all chosen to support us and that you've gotten together to take up the day and support this program. And also thank you to the opening speakers for your inspirational talks and um, to the local hosts, from casts from the Danish representatives in China yes. and all the other organizations among um, Bench Cup China and others supporting us locally in China. 2021 marks the seventh year of us running the University Startup World Cup. And I'm proud to say that in spite of all the challenges to international collaboration and travels and so on, we expect to have more growth partners, more participants in the competition and program than ever before. And I firmly believe that entrepreneurship and international collaboration is key to solving some of the problems that the world is facing. So thank you all very much for supporting this program and allowing us and the startups to solve some of the challenges that we so urgently need to deal with. Before we move on, we have a brief video to show you that highlights some of the elements of this year's University Startup World Cup. So if our friends in China could show that, yes. The University, the University Startup World Cup with the goal of creating a global platform for university startups and enable them to gain international network and resources while simultaneously showcasing the best startups and bringing together the universities and organizations around the world fostering innovation and entrepreneurship around the universities. And I'm happy to say that we're really evolving quickly and with support of friends in Denmark and China and around the world, I see us really creating an amazing competition and event this year as well. And it definitely seems that this kickoff event is a good start and I very much look forward to the event in the fall. We now have the first speaker of, uh, within this segment, who is a former participant in the University Startup World Cup. She's the founder of Cellufi and based here in Denmark she is uh, Ms. Serena Leka. Thank you, Martin, for the introduction. Um, I hope that I'm being heard well. Greetings, everybody over there. Yeah. On behalf of the Cellufi team, I'm sending regards to all the distinguished panelists and the speakers of today, including here fellow entrepreneurs, um, aspiring students, and why not the organizing team here who are now my actually good friends. <laughs> um, I'll try to share the screen, and this should be working now. What we're going to talk, talk today, today shortly is yes. about this case of Cellufi. But first, I'll go through a few memories with the University Startup World Cup. Well, the 
main team of Salogy. Here I have Isabel and David, two of the co-founders of the team. They met um, in one of the university competitions and then they participated in the National Idea Competition for Venture Cup 2017. This quickly was followed by our participation in the World Cup in October, where we also got a nice ticket to the High Tech Summit organized by Danish Technological University, and where we also met our chairman of the board um, today. But what is Celogy and what are we providing for the world today? I'm quite sure that you are all fed up with the uh, effects and the impact of plastic in the world. And here are just a few of the numbers that show how plastic is only having 16% of its waste collected for recycling and the rest 19% is leakage into the environment. Some of the microplastics that we actually get today, they are actually a result of breaking down into the ocean or into the nature, but they could also be intentionally used and designed for, let's say, health and beauty applications. We ingest roughly five grams of these microplastics every week, and it's as much as a chewing on a credit card, actually, through water, drinking water, and having fish. Personally, when I hear these numbers, I get really um, anxious, and frustrated, and immediately get into my thinking solution mode on what we can do about it. So let's see how industries are actually approaching this. They are transforming and they're actually reshaping their requests and demands for sustainable products. As an example, we can take the packaging industry, which is trying to develop more sustainable and recyclable exactly. coding that can replace polyethylene in uh, different applications. And that seemed to be the holy grail for the packaging industry. And if we move on to the textiles, we see that they are on the lookout for sustainable and recyclable materials to replace polyester. A last example here, we have cosmetics who are eagerly seeking, eagerly seeking to sustainably, sustainably find, find additives, additives like, like for thinking, thinking and um, and also find properties to replace um, polyethylene in their applications. So clearly it's very difficult to find a material that can do solve or address all these problems at the same time. And no matter how much effort has been done there, there's no synthetic material providing a holistic solution right now. For that reason, we are introducing to you Ecoflexi which is a new category of biofabricated nanocellulose materials developed and trying to design circular products that can actually replace PE and PS in applications like coding, textiles, cosmetics, and more. Just to mention a few of the positive environmental impact that Ecoflexi has, it's a water-based formulation reducing the use of solvents. It's a bio-based material avoiding the need of fossil-based materials. It minimizes the CO2 footprint with less than 94% of emissions compared to conventional plastic. It's also used to design monomaterial packaging that at the end of life can be collected in the existing waste stream for paper and board, or can actually be biodegraded into nature in a room temperature when in contact with soil, leaving no microplastics behind. As a company, also including Ecoflexi, we have certified our material with regards to the disintegration in the nature. Only in contact with soil, after four weeks, we see no traces of the material. Our technology is now in a patent pending stage for the cultivation of the material, but also certain properties that Ecoflexi presents. In this bio uh, biofabrication process, we have three core steps the design, the grow, and the formulation of Ecoflexi, which at the end creates a whole range of Ecoflexi applications, leaving it open for different possibilities tailor-made to whatever the industry might need. To mention just a few unique characteristics here, um, small particle size, uh, very high temperature stability, high pH stability, high viscosity, and um, good thinning behavior. To all the scientists in the room, I'm sure this speaks volumes to you and with regards to biocellulose uh, materials. Now, Ecoflexi clearly is in the transition to a circular economy. 
And there are not only environmental benefits that are presented, but for that matter, we need the performance benefits to compete with the convenience that plastic presents today. A few of the industries um, that we are trying to approach directly, let's say we have Ecoflexi as a reinforcement agent to produce lightweight, high thermal and durable composites. Ecoflexi as a rheological modifier being super powerful in um, thickening some of these uh, natural textures in cosmetics, let's say. And why not as a barrier and a stabilization agent to provide high quality coatings with excellent barrier properties. The world is ours and the sky is lim the limit. However, we are prioritizing the use of Ecoflexi as performance additive for personal care products and specialty papers. We are actually a women-led company and two of our co-founders, Isabel and Debbie here, have also been part of the Oceans Plastic Challenge organized by National Geographic and Sky Ocean Venture in 2019, which led up to a lot more awards and also a massive funding from the European Innovation Accelerator Program, making up for a 4.6 million euros of funding to date non-dilutive. The company is growing. We are a team of 12 wonderful human beings that seemingly seem to attract a lot more interesting and relevant partners here. And what kind of partners we are looking next is with regards to creating joint development and collaboration agreements with some of the industries I mentioned before, like packaging, paper, cosmetics, textile, and why not also brand owners? We reach commercialization stage by 2023. I would have loved to meet everybody else there uh, in person and talk about our approach to sustainable development goals, um, leading up to concrete um, applications that approach number nine, 12 and 13 directly, and why not life below water, life on land and partnership for the goals. I would like to close it here, making a call to everybody to reach out to Salogy, either directly to me or through our social media challenge. I would say LinkedIn would be the best channel to use and hoping to see everybody uh, safe and sound soon. Um, take care and enjoy the day. See you next in the panel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Serena. It's been inspirational to follow the startup journey that you've been on since the early development of the startup in the World Cup and so on. Syllogy is a good example of one of the many exciting startups that we've had in the competition through the years. We've seen thousands of promising startups come through the competition and hundreds of finalists had the promise of changing the world through entrepreneurship. And also from China, we've seen some very promising startups come out of the university environment. A good example is the next speaker here, Ms. Yan Xiaojun of Saitonish. Good afternoon, honorable guests and audience. Um, I'm very uh, happy to be invited by the committee to share with you my company and my experience with uh, USWC. Uh, Seeing all these colorful blocks displaying the SDGs really bring back the great memories I have in Denmark in 2019. So uh, I'm Xiao Jin from uh, Cytonich Biotech, which is based in Beijing. So Cytonich is a spin-off from uh, Tsinghua uh, University, and we focus on uh, providing solutions for large-scale manufacturing of high-quality life cells. So what can live cells be used for? So live cells are actually very important for cell therapy or clean meat, and also for vaccine and antibody production. So like I said, uh, if you have taken a uh, vaccine against COVID, then it's produced by live cells. So uh, the problem now is that to produce high quality cells at a large scale is a bottleneck for a lot of these uh, biopharmaceutical companies. So what 
cytosol niche provide. How we address this pain point is through our 3D micro tissue engineering technology, which we have over 80 intellectual properties, including patents or copyrights and international patents as well, as well as uh, registered trademarks uh, protecting our uh, products. So we have now commercialized our technology as a 3D tablet tricks, which is a best in class microcarrier in the world because uh, it provides uh, amazing cell harvest efficiency so that you can produ produce a very high quality live cells with our microcarriers. So this is the only microcarrier that is excipient grade, meaning it can go into your body and be safe and degraded in your body as a delivery uh, means for live cells going into your body to treat as diseases. So uh, we are the only microcarrier in the world to be registered with the Chinese NMPA as well as the US FDA. So uh, using this microcarrier, we can scale up the production of live cells in our automated 3D flow to expire reactors. So we eliminate the need for manual production of cells so that we have a consistent uh, cell quality without any uh, manipulation by uh, human involvement. So, and we can scale up to a uh, thousand liters of uh, culture of live cells. So uh, Satonich is established, was established in 2018 as a spin-off from Tsinghua, as I mentioned. And since then, we have raised over 15 million US dollars uh, in four uh, rounds, a series of uh, fundraising. And it seems that uh, we have joined the USWs in 2019. And since then, we have another additional two rounds of fundraising, of which we also receive international fundings. So it's from our exposure with this kind of international competitions that we receive uh, attention from interna international investors. So uh, since uh, our establishment in 2018 with only three members, we have now expanded to a 50 people company. And we have uh, our R&D in Beijing and our manufacturing in Tianjin. So, uh, so about more than 70% of the cell therapy companies in China are currently in collaboration with us using our technology and trying to help them produce better cells for our treatments. And also as with uh, the vaccine production companies, they also look into this. And they, this year we have just received a collaboration with a very big uh, COVID vaccine production company. So um, we aim to, we projected that we have a, a over $3 million sales in 2021. So uh, we are growing rapidly. So. Um, to share with my uh, experience with a international co uh, competition, uh, I would say that, um, as they say, the future of the world belongs to the youth of the world. So it's the youth that will change how the world will become in, in the coming years. So uh, it's very important for us youth to look into the international uh, at a worldwide scale to see what other people other youths from other parts of the world are, try, are passionate about what they are trying to do with their technology and innovation, what they see there's a need to change in the world and how they want to make the world a better place. So uh, it's through USWC that I meet with a lot of uh, passionate youths who want to change the world, who aims to make the world a better place by addressing the SDGs. So. Um, and it's through this competition that uh, we at Cytonich also broaden our horizon. And uh, it's from there that we, we set the goal that we are not only a made in China product for the Chinese market, but we want to go out of China and make our technology available to the rest of the world as well. And it's also in this year, we have now uh, international sales as well. So right, made in China for the world. So uh, that's all for my sharing today. And I'm very honored to be here. And I wish that uh, I wish the event a success and I wish you all have a very nice evening. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Christian. It's been truly inspirational to follow your extraordinary startup. It's no longer really a startup, it's a proper company with international sales and really um, a promise to make a massive impact, massive impact in the world. And seeing the quality of startups coming out of China in recent years, 
especially with the help of the yeah. I've been very happy that we relocate the final competition to China last year, unfortunately, mainly online, but also with a live event in Wenzhou. And again, this year we'll have the event in China. China. So, so I, think, I think that that has a lot of promise for the future and the quality of the program overall. We could not have this competition without our amazing country partners. Now we'll hear from some of them. And one of the partners that has been supporting the University of Colorado for many years is the University of Reykjavik. They are represented by the director, Professor Ari Kristin Gunther. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Delighted to be with you. Um, so I don't need to tell you, and we've heard from the excellent keynote speakers and others, just how one important a role universities play in advancing the world, whether it's the social issues, sustainability issues, or advancing technology so that we can have a better life and, and new ways of doing things. Universities are the source of the research, the ideas, the new things that drive innovation and advancement. They're also the source of students who have the energy and capabilities and time to do a lot of things. And universities provide a great environment for experimenting with things, to try out, fail, and try again. And I'm actually not just saying this because I work at a university. Um, I actually spent 16 years in Silicon Valley. This is during the years 1991 through 2007. And those years are the birth time of the technology giants that we see today and the current technology that's a lot of things that we do. And the fact is that the universities in the area were the source of many of the ideas. Google came out of Stanford while I was a student there. The students who stepped out or finished their degree and then went to work for these small companies are the ones who created what we have today. And we've seen this all around the world, this same pattern. It's the students and the universities that drive this innovation. Now, I've been at Reykjavik University since uh, 2007. And of course, we have a key role in, in uh, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship in Iceland because our role as universities is to have impact, to make society better, to increase living standards, etc. And we've done things and sometimes differently. But one of the things, for example, we have done is that all of our students, every single student who comes through the university has to take an innovation class. And we provide facilities for students, for startup, and we have big ideas for how to move forward. And the reason we're doing this is that the world is changing so fast. We see the global economy, the global markets and the connections that we see. The technology revolution is starting. And we have so much left to do. And then, of course, we all have to take on a shared responsibility when it comes to the climate, the sustainability, climate sustainability, and the social, and the social, social infrastructure, infrastructure that we need. That we need. So at the university, we need to continue to embrace a global perspective. We have to increase international collaboration, and not just at the level of, of you know, rectors and presidents and professors meeting, but the students, connecting the students. Um, in this regard, I've been to China actually many, many times, and I'm really hoping I can be there in November. Uh, my last trip to China was in November 2019, and I can't wait to go back. And of course, I worked for many, many years with good colleagues in Danish universities. Um, what we need to do when it comes to addressing these issues that I mentioned, how do we harness the technology innovation for good things? How do we build the global connections that we need in the world today to move things forward and take shared responsibility? How do we all work together to address you know, the issues in terms of sustainability, climate, and other things? And the best way to do this, so that we are sure that we do this for the future, not just for a short time, is to engage the students at the universities and engage the young people. As was said earlier here today, it's the young people who are the drivers of the future and addressing these issues. And having now been at the university for 14 years, I have infinite respect 
for the students all around the world, for the young people, the young generation, what they can do. So I don't need to sit here and tell students that they should be creative, that they should be global, global they should be environmentally be responsible, they should be socially responsible. They have all of this and they're way better at this than I ever was. What we can do and what we can do together is to provide them with the support and the opportunities that they need so that they can harness their capabilities, their desires to make things happen. And the University Startup World Cup is a key element in making that so. So we're really thrilled to be part of Venture Cup and to be part of the University Startup World Cup. Uh, we've been part of this for many years. We send a team every year to the, to the Cup, but it has also been very beneficial to us. We have enjoyed the insights from the capable teams at Venture Cup with the developments within the university. So it's a great honor for me to be allowed to be a part of this ceremony. I look forward to meeting all of you in person, hopefully in November, and uh, can't wait to uh, see the students, their projects, their pitches, and their fantastic ideas for the future. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ari, for giving us the university perspective and also for supporting the university startup World Cup through the years, yeah. always stepping up when speakers are needed or, or support in general is needed. Having university partners that support the university start world cup is essential as the leader of the university start world cup i can say that we could not have done this without a growing group of universities supporting us and local partners in various countries finding the right supporting startups to join the competition it's a growing community and one of the new countries that has joined the ranks is serbia and with us we have, we have director, director of Dear students, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to send you greetings from the University of Belgrade. We are a proud participant of the University Startup World Cup. I especially expect in this year 2021 that there are very many challenges for any type of meeting that has to be held in a virtual way. But I think our experiences of the past three semesters have shown that academic communities can adapt and even empower themselves in situations that are uh, always a challenge. How do I see the University of Belgrade? The University of Belgrade is a very large research-oriented comprehensive university with about 100,000 students. We cover four large areas of study, engineering, medical sciences, natural sciences, and social sciences and humanities. We put a great emphasis on our research potential and we try to pass this on to the students. But understanding the needs of today's society, we're also bringing in the entrepreneurial element into university studies. We see this as a very important way of empowering our students to be fully capable to find the right job for themselves at, on the global labor market. I also see this as a way of promoting entrepreneurship because not all of us will be entrepreneurs in the true sense, but we need to understand the power of entrepreneurship in bringing a society forward and also understanding the global connections that bring us all together. I think the University of Belgrade has developed a very good innovation ecosystem. It consists of a university center for technology transfer. Uh, we have a science technology park together with the Ministry of Education and Science and Technological Development and the city of Belgrade. We also have a technology business incubator and about seven innovation centers that cater to the needs of our 31 faculties and 11 research institutes. In this way, we are really trying to make a bridge so that our researchers can pass all of the obstacles and hardships on the way to a successful commercialization of their research results. This is no easy task, but one part being, of course, the financial aspect, but I think much more important is the atmosphere in which we cater to the needs 
of our researchers and support them in their efforts to uh, come to a, some kind of a commercial uh, utilization of their scientific results. In this respect, we are also focusing on interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, and transdisciplinary research, seeing this as the best vehicle of obtaining the results more, most interesting to society, and putting this all together in the context of the sus sustainable development goals of the United Nations. So all in all, I'm sure that the University of Belgrade is supporting and empowering students in a large sense to bring global development. And I wish all of the contestants that are participating in the University Startup World Cup 2021. The best result, of course, I think you should take time to try to meet people, make contacts and enjoy the best of it, gain new experiences. And if you win, that's an additional benefit. But I think it's generally a win that you are participating in the Cup and that no one will really be a loser. All the best. Good luck. Thank you, very, Thank you much very much to the rector of the University of Belgrade in Serbia, Professor Ivanka Popovic, for the support um, of the University Startup World Cup. One of the main reasons for having this program and competition is to bring the community together internationally, to bring all the startups and countries together in an international platform of knowledge sharing between the partners and giving network and resources and sharing that between all the partners and startups. We have a very strong team here in Copenhagen working tirelessly to bring in new partners and the same in China led by uh, Jane Wu and Potter Wu in uh, China who are all working to bring in new partners and this year we have a strong partnership in Africa um, which is an important goal for us because we work with diversity and reaching new countries. And one of the country partners that we have now is Michele Flotlo, who is the vice chancellor of the National University of Science and Technology in Zimbabwe. I'm Professor Mkelehi Lotlo, the vice chancellor of National University of Science and Technology. It's not just commonly known, called, I mean, known as uh, NAST. And sometimes to distinguish it from other NASTs around the world, it is called NAST Zimbabwe. From our home city of Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, I would like to welcome all global participants uh, to the important occasion in the career journey of university students everywhere. A special welcome to my students, Team NAST, who are once again taking NAST a brand as a brand abroad, globally. Yes, as a Zimbabwean, I would be happy to share with the world the concept of Education 5.0 and the role of NAST as a university in Zimbabwe in producing investor, inventors and entrepreneurial graduates. As NAST, our mandate is to lead in human capital development for industrial and socioeconomic transformation with a bias towards science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We call this STEM, STEM-based solutions. The new Zimbabwean education policy trust called Education 5.0 puts a lot of emphasis on innovation and industrialization on top of the traditional teaching, research, and scholarly community engagement. The University Startup World Cup 2021, that competition is therefore in tandem with our vision and mission of producing innovative and entrepreneurial graduates we are therefore very excited about the opportunity given to our students to showcase their innovations and entrepreneurial skills. In light of uh, our trust and, and mission, 
I would like to highlight our students' accomplishments as examples of how innovative and entrepreneurial they are. Our students have participated in various innovation and entrepreneurial competitions and have come out victorious. Last year alone, NAS Inectas team represented the country at the World Cup virtual competitions held in the Netherlands. While early this year, Farm Hut, an agricultural startup that creates linkages between farmers and uh, the market, won a hundred thousand US dollars at the Global Hut uh, Prize competition. With the support and guidance that NAST gives uh, to students, we challenge them to live up to our motto: think in other terms. And they do this by coming up with new innovations that can be turned into businesses or solve societal challenges. Well, before I give my well wishes to the students, maybe I need to also point out that to support students and other innovators nationally, NAST set up an innovation hub whose major role is to incubate innovators. So tomorrow, the NAST Innovation Hub will be hosting its inaugural Research and Innovation Expo. So let me take this opportunity to congratulate the organizers of the University Startup World Cup 2021 competition. Despite the challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic, we applaud you for according university students worldwide an opportunity to showcase their innovations and network with global future investor, inventors and innovators and entrepreneurial leaders. I wish all the participants top class presentations. At the end of this competition, you are all winners and, you, and your careers will never be the same again. To my NAST team in particular, seize this opportunity to show the world that NAST is one university with giant footprints. I thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much, much to Professor, Professor Sine for his firm support of university entrepreneurship and the University Startup World Cup and his NAST team. Very much look forward to having them with us this year. And that concludes the USWC talks for now and leads us to the next segment, which will be facilitated and moderated by the Dean at the SDC, Ms. Zhao Hong, locally uh, for the ceremony. Thank you. Thank you very much for Thomas um, Andalus. A very exciting uh, moderator for to share the learning experience and the working experience. Now we are going to move um, very exciting uh, moment and lunch ceremony for the university's uh, startup World Cup 2021. And now we would like to welcome the honored guests on stage for this lunch ceremony. They are um, Thomas Miller and uh, Cedus Church, Churchy, sorry, <laughs> sorry, and Miss Wang Yanfen and the Mr. Chen Rui and the Mr. Zhao Baojun and the Mr. Magnus uh, Jerry and the Mr. Hers Roberter and the Mr. Martin Ren Hawksford, uh, Hawkster, and the Mr. Li Jijen, and the Miss Jane Wu. I don't know. 
就是你。So this section is finished. We are succeed, and now we are going to move the next section, and uh, I'm going to introduce another uh, moderator, uh, Thomas Hansen from the Danish um, uh, Innovation Center from Shanghai. Thomas, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Professor Zhao. I would like to welcome a number of speakers to uh, a panel discussion. Uh, we will have a panel discussion in two rounds. Uh, and I think we will need a bit of help with uh, some chairs. Um, oh, there they come. So please, uh, Professor Li Shishen, um, Magnus Joram, please, uh, Haldar Aberg, and we need Miss Jane Wu, who will also be uh, with us in a minute. Yeah, my name is Thomas Trost Hansen, and I'm the science attaché to China. Um, it means that I'm privileged with the task of initiating and advising on collaborations within education, innovation, and research. Though today is really a bit of a professional birthday for me, because this panel discussion is going to be exactly about all that I work with on a daily basis, because entrepreneurship is sort of at the heart of this. Um, we have an outstanding line of panelists, and instead of uh, inviting each of us to give a presentation, I would like for us to try to have a roundtable discussion uh, with uh, some interaction. And we are running a bit behind schedule, but I would like to start off with each of you giving a short presentation of yourself and then your organizational background, and then sharing one key message that you would like the audience to reflect upon after this roundtable. Please, uh, oh, and sorry, I forgot to introduce Serena because she's also with us on this, uh, on this uh, roundtable here. And why don't we start with you, Serena? I think you've introduced your background but could you share one key, key message with us, please? Yes, yes, thank you, thank Thomas, you. And greetings again to everybody else in, in there. Um, I'll just keep it very brief and I'll talk about the value of uh, having entrepreneurial mindset and skills for employability options. For some countries in the world, that is a hobby. For some others, it's a choice for growth. But for many others, it's also a way to survive for the next couple of years and going through the unexpected um, events that life might throw at us. And I'll leave it there to sink in. And please, Magnus, could you uh, take over from here? Yes, well, um... You were asked me to introduce myself. My name is uh, Magnus Joram. I'm the uh, science and education counselor at the uh, Norwegian embassy uh, here in Beijing. Uh, and I've worked with uh, um, uh, research collaboration with China for many years, previously in Shanghai and before that actually in Copenhagen. So thank you. 
Hi, Thomas. Thank you. So my name is uh, Ji Zhen Li in Chinese, Li Ji Zhen. So I come from Tsinghua University, professor of innovation and entrepreneurship uh, in our School of Economics and Management. So very glad to attend this ceremony. Thank you. So my name is Jane. Uh, I'm the executive director for uh, Venture Cup China. So we actually started promoting the Nordic concept of innovation and entrepreneurship since 2017. And we had the privilege to finally bring the global final to China last year. And we're going to do it again in this year. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jane. Thank you, uh, Thomas. By the way, Jane is one of of the heroes behind this whole initiative. <laughs> I'm really uh, honored to be here today. My name is Haltor Berg, and I am the country representative of uh, a project called EuroAccess China, which is an in initiative of the European Commission Directorate of Research and Innovation of the European Union. It's a bit of a mouthful, and a lot of people might not know what that even means. So just really quickly, what we do is that we work with individual researchers and, and entrepreneurs like the people in here today, uh, we help researchers here in China to connect with the European research area, and we help uh, Europeans that want to come here and stay here in China. And I guess my message today uh, uh, to all of you is that, um, that uh, there's a lot of collaboration that is going on. There's a lot of money that goes into cooperating between China and Europe, etc. But it's all based on people like you that needs to actually do that work. <laughs> And that's why I'm very inspired by this uh, uh, initiative here today. It has all my favorite concepts inside of it. It is uh, based on institutional uh, uh, bedrock universities. It is global World Cup. It's an international collaboration. And it's for startups, which means that it's for people like you. So I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. And it's absolutely true. Jane is the brains behind this event today, but not only the brains, also the muscle uh, pushing it through. So Jane, do you have a message you would like to share with us today? Yes. So firstly, thank you for all the friends and distinguished guests here in this raining day. But I think we all feel the warm and the coziness in this Danish style building and also the absolutely world class mindset. So I hope that the, we could uh, continue uh, supporting the youth in innovation and also continue to support a lot more platform like us to grow this uh, platform and also the connections bigger. Thank you. Professor Lee, I mean, when you are a university student, you're supposed to be learning. You're supposed to be studying and building capacity within a fairly narrow field. How does entrepreneurship fit in there? Why, why does entrepreneurship make sense for, for, from a university perspective? Actually, this is not new. For example, eight years ago in Tsinghua University, we initiate a, a education platform, Tsinghua X Lab. So in the beginning, we just want to cultivate the students' entrepreneurship. So not only to, for example, to let the students to have the chance to start up the new business, but also to let them know entrepreneurship actually is the, Thomas Muller just mentioned that it's a mindset. So it's a spirit. Let them know that you can have a very important entrepreneurship even in government agency or even in very big firms. Actually, this is very useful. So up to now, so we, we think that we made a great, progress. Even I, I want to say, so for example, a lot of SDC students and also the faculty members, especially those major innovation, came to visit our Tsinghua X lab during the past several years. Unfortunately, not the last year and this year. True. Uh, Serena, could you share a bit with us, what have you learned from being an entrepreneur? I'm sure that you have spent a lot of time building this company. Uh, and then, and that time could also have been spent on on reading books and going even deeper in your field. How do you see that trade off, and and what have you gotten out of it? Thank you, thank Thomas. you, Thomas. There are many, there are many questions, questions in what in you what you mentioned. just mentioned. <laughs> so, so um, I'll just I'll briefly, briefly recap, recap on what Professor, what professor mentioned, mentioned with regards to the offerings that a that campus can provide, provide to students. To students. I believe that there is no one size fit all opportunity for all the universities in the world. And to address that um, 
entrepreneurship mindset and entrepreneurial activities activities are a source of employment, every university has different needs. So some might work better with uh, focusing on knowledge or focusing on skill, and maybe some others need to provide networking opportunities. And this is the one that I find the most useful for the entrepreneurs on campus, whether we can get access to um, not just uh, industry contacts, but also leaders of a country, leaders of the region, and maybe more talent uh, worldwide. So in, in the time of building Celogy, we have made use of multiple um, resources, either from Denmark, European Union, or worldwide. I also was in China for the Global Innovation Summit in December 2019, uh, right before the global pandemic. And I noticed that, um, again, networking might make a big difference for a company like ours and many other companies that are in their first five years. If you meet with a brilliant person, an expert in an area, you can save yourself a week or two weeks of reading a book by just having a drink over dinner. So, so. Well, that's very much like my job. Uh, I think I learn a lot from uh, meeting brilliant people. And one of the experts uh, on internationalization is exactly Magnus here. Could you talk a bit about what sort of, what is the addition from having an international collaboration? How do you see that adds to, uh, to, the, to the mix of entrepreneurship? Well, thank you, uh, Thomas. Um, I think I'll make uh, two brief points uh, from my perspective. Um, first of all, uh, innovation, entrepreneurship um, are by their very nature international. Um, companies, ideas uh, don't develop in national contexts in isolation, right? They cross over borders, they interact with companies and ideas in other countries, uh, whether in competition or collaboration uh, or, or some combination of the two, right? Um, secondly, um, innovation very often happens in the collision uh, of different ideas when people from different cultures, different disciplinary or professional backgrounds interact. And I believe that um, the most innovative team is the one with people from different, uh, you know, upbringings, uh, different experiences, working together, challenging each other. And when you think about kind of the important technological innovations of our day, like social media platforms, whether in China or the West, um, they aren't just technological uh, innovations. They're very much social innovations where psychology and human behavior matter. And that's the result of uh, different disciplines interacting to, to create something. Very interesting. I, we, I, I think we can share a little secret, uh, Jane. A week ago, this panel looked very different. Uh, it was only uh, men sitting here uh, supposed to be talking about entrepreneurship. Luckily, we, we managed to do it a little better uh, in the, for, for the real kickoff here. But uh, Halda, could, could you speak a bit about this element of diversity and what role the, the diversity plays? Oh, please, Jane, yes. Uh, so when coming across our work in internationalization with innovation and entrepreneurship, we definitely see more and more females take an active role and uh, being able to thinking beyond the, the normal norms. And uh, we are very much supporting on that in a sense. And then the other part we see is actually on the researcher side, because usually we had the concept of researchers sitting in the lab coding or doing their own experiment. Through our work, we realized that they actually need a bit more help to communicate with outside of the world. And USWC actually giving them some opportunity to talk into the others who might also having a similar academic background uh, and also may want to do something together. So through that, we see researcher uh, had a, a much better, uh, let's say, communication as well as working skills in a sense. So that's the two uh, top ones I see. And the, the last but not least one I saw is a lot of startups, um, for instance, in Europe or in, in, in US uh, has been thinking China as a future market, but it also seems to be too far away for them. So what about China? How big it is, right? And where to go, what to do? It seems like wonderful, but how to start. 
So we do see the diversity of the participants, the nationalities, as well as the genders, allows the, the startups in different country to have a peak view to China market and have a pass or a landing place to do so. And that was also the reason why after two years work, we do actually with Magnus a lot in Shanghai, uh, we started physically a landing pad. So that means it is very simple for someone who wants to learn something or go somewhere, but don't know where to start. So we will be very happy to be the place for them to start. Thank you. Helder, you have helped hundreds of uh, especially European researchers going to, to China and talk to them and understood what they're going through. If you could share some key learnings from having this conversation of entering China for a research collaboration or a research stay, what, uh, what would sort of be your highlights and, and most important messages to share? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah I, I can tell you that one of the uh, challenges we sometimes face is that we end up with panels with only males as well <laughs> all the time. And, uh, and it's not because there's not a lot of excellent, amazing uh, females out there. It's just because, you know, we are stuck in a rut and we're not thinking like with an open mind. And I can, I can tell you that has never not helped out uh, an event to really just think about this a little bit and, and change how you deal with this. In general, I think uh, it is always super beneficial for uh, for anybody that wants to be innovative, wants to engage in, 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 in knowledge generation to think in global terms and, uh, and engage in international collaboration, you will always benefit from it. Like uh, Magnus said earlier, uh, science, science challenges today are, are complicated and they require diversity. Uh, you need a lot of different thoughts to be able to kind of deal with them. And sometimes you just need a lot of people and big teams. It's just simply that you might not have the strengths and expertise. So you need to sort of like uh, find, uh, overcome your shortages by, uh, by working with people elsewhere where they might have some of the things that you don't have. It's just really, really simple in that terms. And I think actually uh, like Nordic countries like Denmark knows this better than anybody else. It's just very, very essential, right? To be able to uh, uh, do, do really well. But beyond that, I think maybe the most important uh, sort of uh, reason to work globally is that today's challenges are global and uh, we have all of them here right in front of us kind of like uh, the, the, the sustainability goals etc and <laughs> and uh, the global uh, uh, when we think about like uh, the biggest things that entrepreneurs need to be like dealing with today and governments and everybody we're talking about things like climate change we're talking about things like um, health you know, that's probably the biggest thing right now, right? Or we could be think, thinking about things like digitalization, et cetera. And, uh, and to be able to deal with those, we need to work together. There's just no other way uh, to go about that. Please, Magnus, I think you have a comment on this thing. Yeah, I, I very much agree with both what um, Haldor and Jane said about uh, the importance of um, diversity. And I just want to add um, kind of, you know, it's also so important for the inclusivity of the final product or service you design for these for these startups or other companies. When you design a building, you need to include people with disabilities in the process for it to be accessible for people, right? If you uh, make a TV show, you want uh, minorities in your writing staff for the final product to not have a one-sided perspective. Or if you develop an app that's supposed to be international, you need people from different cultural backgrounds with different skills in order to adapt it or make it you know, uh, appealing to people and users in different uh, countries. So it's not just about, you know, um, uh, sparking ideas off of each other. It's also about reaching a larger audience of, of users. And building teams that actually uh, uh, brings together a, a variety of nationalities, I'm sure is quite a problem in these uh, pandemic times. But uh, Professor Lee, maybe you could share some reflections on what kind of consequences the pandemic has for the entrepreneurial setup at, uh, at your university. What barriers does it uh, create and maybe also a few opportunities? Okay, so thank you. In the beginning, we think that COVID-19 is a big barrier for our a lot of these kind of uh, activities. 
finally, we found that uh, because of the online platform and uh, a lot and the time, actually, last year, for example, take the case of Tsinghua X Lab, we have more more co international collaborations than last year or even than the year before. Uh, last year, for example, we have very good collaborations with the University of Geneva. So we initiate the SDG programs, Open Hexen in Tsinghua University. Uh, last year, we have more than 1,000 students attending this kind of program. And this year, because of the last year's achievement, so Tsinghua University, you may know that uh, several years ago, Tsinghua initiated the global strategy. And uh, Tsinghua have the global summer school for all of the students in the world. So this year, we will have more than 1,000 undergraduate students from all over the world to attend the SDG program. And uh, we'll be, uh, we, I, I'm the chair professor, actually. I will, I, will, I will lead this kind of program for those students. So, so because of the COVID-19 pandemic, so we can have more and more collaborations with other partners, not only the University of Geneva, but also uh, Imperial College London and uh, NUS, National University of Singapore. So for example, uh, two years before, we only can have partnership with the University, National University of Singapore. But this year, we may have eight universities partnership because we, we can have a lot of this kind of programs online. So it's very flexible for us. And we have more, we, we will be more and more international like this. Thank you. Unfortunately, we are running uh, a bit short on time. So I think we'll need to wrap up our uh, panel discussion here and uh, leave the floor for our next uh, panelist, unless there's one urging message on somebody's tongue. I think we, we don't have it, we will thank, oh. Serena, yes, you can have it. Yes, yes. Thank, you, Thomas. thank you, Thomas. On behalf of the title for this panel, we say why entrepreneurship and innovation is very important on campus. University doesn't teach you managing chaos. And once you are part of a startup or once you're part of an entrepreneurial project, like whatever that might be at school, you will master the chaos. And then you can handle whatever you uh, will face um, in the next job. So remember that uh, going through chaos, you'll only learn that through your startup or your project. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Wonderful. That's a good learning, huh? Well, thank you. Thank you very much to our participants here. I think you can leave the microphone on the chairs. And then I would like to invite Professor Wu to the, to the stage. And online, we will be joined by Senior Vice President of the Novo Nordisk Foundation, Mikkel Skolbo. Uh, oh, sorry. And we will have uh, Investment Manager Chang join us here physically as well, please. Online, we also have a managing partner of uh, EA Ventures, Stephen Kriskow. And from uh, the Superior University Lahore, we have Professor Munyib Ahmed. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I would like just to start in the in a similar way with uh, giving the floor to each of you for you to give a brief presentation of yourself and share one key message that you would like the audience to remember when we are done with this roundtable. So please, Chen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And good afternoon, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and students, and good morning, Europe. Uh, I'm Zhang Ying, and the senior investment manager from Guangfa Xinde. And our company is the sub whole subsidiary of Guangfa Securities, uh, which is the top one non-state-owned uh, investment bank in China. Um, we mainly focus on areas like uh, life science, um, clean tech, uh, in, in intellectual manufacture, 
and the TMT. So um, I'm very glad and honored to be here to share uh, with all of you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And Professor Wu. Thank you, Thomas. And a good afternoon and a good morning. Uh, so my name is Jason Wu. Uh, I'm a professor and also a dean uh, from UCAS. I specialize in uh, risk analytics and finance and operation management. So we're glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And now I see we have a double up on Stephen. So let's uh, give the floor to him uh, while waiting for Mikkel to come back on. Please, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's a pleasure to I am a founding partner uh, of a new Nordic life science venture fund called IR Ventures. Uh, we launched last year, uh, last summer, uh, so managed to do uh, the fund in, in this uh, turbulent time of a pandemic. Apart from uh, my role in IR Ventures, I also have the immense pleasure of being the chairman of Venture Cup Denmark. I've served, served as chairman for more than 10 years, um, so obviously it's also been, uh, been a a very good thing to see how this initiative with the University Startup World Cup has developed over the years and now to reach this uh, very successful format. So pleasure to be here and meet you all. Congratulations on your successes so far with the Venture Cup. And uh, the floor to uh, Munir Ahmed in Lahore, please. Thank you very much. I'm director and for entrepreneurship development uh, University of uh, basically, I'm um, coming uh, here an entrepreneurial center and I'm the uh, country partner for Venture Cup Denmark. And thank you very much, uh, dear panelists, uh, the, the moderating team, and the Venture Cup uh, Denmark who gave me the opportunity to be uh, with you. Uh, my my question and my uh, takeaway for the young entrepreneurs. Uh, basically, the entrepreneurial drive is all about the uh, game of your mindset. Uh, how you perceive the thing, how you see the thing, and how you act upon the thing. For me, uh, if, if a uh, young entrepreneur or maybe the aspiring entrepreneur would like to uh, contribute into the uh, economy of the country, uh, they must focus, they must be persistent, and they must be passionate about it. Uh, Th thank you. And I see that we have Mikkel with us uh, as well. So please, Mikkel, uh, would you introduce yourself and, and share one key message for our audience here? Of course. Uh, uh, thank you, Thomas. And thank you for inviting me to this event today. Um, just uh, a brief background on the Nordic Foundation. Um, we are an independent state. <laughs> Uh, we have two, two major objectives. Uh, one is to provide a, a stable basis for the um, uh, commercial and research activities at our uh, two companies, uh, the Nova Nordisk AS and Nova Science AS. Secondly, uh, we support uh, scientific, humanitarian, and social understood in, in, in a wide sense. Uh, but our main focus lies within uh, biomedicine and biotechnology research, uh, but we also award uh, grants for research in art history, for instance. In uh, 2020, we awarded uh, grants uh, in, in the upward vicinity of about uh, 1 billion US dollars, and I think we will see this amount uh, triple in the years to come. Um, innovation and entrepreneurship uh, are increasingly important to us uh, because it's a way to, to translate research discoveries and impact for society and patients as such. Uh, and we do that by funding uh, activities exactly uh, as we are uh, gathered around here today. Okay. It can be providing cash for uh, funding for, for researchers. It can be early seed investments. It could be uh, innovation infrastructure, such as, bio, such as accelerators and, in, and, and uh, incubators. Uh, and I just did the math. I, I think we, 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 we awarded about 500 uh, uh, projects in, in over the last 10 years to, to individual researchers to translate the, their, their research. And what, one key takeaway I had for uh, the many budding entrepreneurs out there is that uh, please do seek the advice uh, from key opinion leaders uh, earlier rather than later. Um, it, it's important that you, that, 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 that you share your ID that, that your, and your IP as well early. Mm -hmm. Don't be too afraid that it will be stolen. If it will be, it will be anyway. Uh, but it's important that you press your chest your idea very, very early. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. I think that's a very valuable piece of uh, advice. And it might be obvious to the audience, but we have a, a bit of a focus on the investor side in this panel. And maybe it would be interesting to stay a bit in, in this uh, on this topic and invite Chang to give an investor's perspective and to share a bit of thoughts on, on what are you looking for when looking into entrepreneurs and startups? What is very important for you in, in sort of the mindset uh, of the people? Oh, okay. Um, mm, I think I believed um, many of the world's future entrepreneurs are sitting just in today's audience. Um, uh, I think um, uh, the paths for everyone is different, is unique. So just take what I have said um, for reference. Um, lots of people consider the entrepreneurship as um, an inspiring idea, uh, whether it is an else app, uh, software, uh, cutting edge technology, whatever it is. Um, I'd like to say that the idea is the key element, but it is not the whole story. Um, the reality is um, how you execute it in the idea, uh, how your product or your idea can add value to the existing market and how the market is ready for your product is more important. So my advice um, is that uh, experience dimensions of running a business, starting a firm, as much as possible now, and um, such as marketing, uh, industry research, uh, building your team, uh, seeking potential investors, uh, something like that. And, and I believe in this process and you can get uh, closer and closer to your dream. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. I think that's a very important message. Do it. Uh, and uh, Stephen, I, I would like to have uh, you in here as well, maybe give a, a bit of a reflection on, on both uh, what you're looking for in, uh, in the group of people you invest in, and also how you work with diversity in this aspect, what role it plays in your portfolio and, and decision making processes. Please, Stephen. Well, thank well, you. And, and I thank you. And, and I, I uh, think I'm going to an advice in my introductory an advice in my introductory statement but i can sort of combine it now uh, and and one piece of advice would uh, actually be a that, successful startup uh, a successful startup there i think very very seldom there i think there are very few examples of a successful startup being the result of team effort it person. takes input from it is a team effort taken from a number of people who supplement and uh, complement we each other to launch uh, we were founders to launch our founders with different backgrounds different uh different backgrounds of course with a, with a common to build this new um, and to 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 build this new fund that we've made and i think a, any success of people around them where venture each of them need are to qualify um, qualified uh, have the right skills but more a, importantly that when they where they a, supplement each other and this this is complementarity on, on both the sort of, um, of skill level around them on the right similarity on both the level so and, and that's skill level but also on so when it comes in, comes in. Uh, we don't want don't, i mean it, it's i mean it, it's really a, a founding team which are like clones of each other uh, uh, being both in a, a, a real sense and, and in, a, in a sort of um, more psychological uh, sense, but you need to have uh, diversity. Uh, it, it is something that uh, uh, it, it is something that uh, I think you will find in most successful startups. That if you sort of dissect the, the, the history and, and how they were able to see that there was a team, uh, a little close knit team, uh, close knit team, uh, and, and typically startups will be operating with small teams, but then they need to be. A, a diverse group of people that, that supplement each other. And then I think, then I think many of my co-panelists and, and, and in, the, in the presentations you heard before, uh, the ones that need for Obviously, um, the, this is uh, even more, more important now than ever. 
so you need to to seek out uh, expert advisors, uh, key opinion leaders, whether they're in Beijing or Boston or Berlin. It doesn't really matter. I think the pandemic we've taken yet another jump in in becoming virtual citizens of the world. And actually, uh, more than ever, it, it is possible now to, to uh, access talent and, and competencies wherever it may be. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, it sort of leads me to you, Professor Wu, and your work here at the University of preparing students for a meeting and investor team working with entrepreneurship. How do you as a university sort of try to to build an entrepreneurial mindset into the students and make them ready to, to engage in these kind of activities. Sure, thank you. Uh, I would like to cite uh, a famous saying from William Shakespeare, uh, a question actually, uh, what is C between B and a D? Uh, some of you might understand, right? B denotes you know, birth and then death, but C, you know, choice. But my understanding or my explanation for this one, B uh, is a big data, D is a design. So uh, it's uh, from uh, upstream driven big data to the downstream design. And then you need to have your intelligent, smart uh, choice. Choice on your investor, you know, engaging in investor community, uh, choice on your, you know, uh, designing your objective of starting your uh, small business or from your design objective to uh, decomposing different measures, different metrics. And also you can try identify key metrics that are on the risk and safe side. So all this design system, you need to carefully think about it. Uh, I would like to also uh, use uh, my uh, strategy, uh, three S strategy to give some advice here. So three S, one S is smart. So intelligence, always, you know, be smart. And then also be strong, strong in designing in a systematic way to design, to find your business, to identify metrics that would design a good system, a good metric. And also the last S, that's your uh, smart choice on everything. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is very helpful, I'm sure, for, for a lot of us here, uh, because it, uh, as it has been said many times, entrepreneurship is not only something you apply when, when starting up a business. Hopefully it's something that most of us apply and, and do uh, do work with experiments in our daily work. I think this is a, a source of a lot of uh, capacity building and staying fresh in our minds. I would like to uh, give the floor to uh, Munyeb in uh, Ahmed and have a reflection on sort of what it means for, for your students having this international link to the Venture Cup. How do you see that they have benefited from having this uh, collaboration? Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, before getting into the answer of this question, let me uh, tell you so how we uh, do engage in investor community uh, for our students. Here in Pakistan, uh, we have a strong and largest ecosystem, that's entrepreneurial ecosystem, where we have established an actual reality show in some sort of uh, dragon sand and uh, anti shark tank. Uh, the show that is the idea of millions, where we connect the startup community to the investors community, and they can have the real time live over the national television. They can get the investors opportunity uh, over the live. Where the second thing, uh, what would be the benefit, and how the students are getting the benefit from venture uh, up? Uh, Marvelous opportunity uh, we have uh, generated and we have created for the Pakistani people uh, in, with the respect and with the, uh, you know, uh, the, the help of uh, VC team, uh, especially the Sodena, especially the John Kitchen and uh, the Martin, 
uh, we we are uh, we are creating a bridge uh, between the uh, local market uh, player of Pakistan in, uh, into the global market uh, through the platform of the uh, visa. Uh, they, they have getting the benefit uh, from uh, in terms of exposure they are getting exposure in terms of the, uh, investors community in terms of the uh, the professionals who are dealing with the uh, global entrepreneurial ecosystem and that's the uh, is the core of the collaboration how we can facilitate our students and how we can facilitate uh, the emerging economy uh, of the country and of the globe uh, where students can contribute and, and perceive the ideas and the problems from all over the world. So uh, uh, lastly, uh, let me uh, uh, tell you, we have already uh, uh, contributing uh, among the Pakistani students from the US uh, State Department, where we have certain programs uh, we have in, uh, incorporated among the local communities of the Pakistani students. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I would like to ask Mikkel a question on uh, on sort of the personality traits, and maybe I'll, I'll pose it in a way. Michael, have you ever worked with people that you didn't like? <laughs> Thank you for that uh, question, Thomas. Of, of course I did. Uh, but I think um, I would like to rephrase this a little bit uh, when thinking about mindset. Uh, think about the, the Pareto principle. It states that 20% uh, that of, of, of any activity will produce 80% of the results. If you rewrite that a little bit into a mindset thinking, you, you would go 80% of success is due to, to mindset and 20% to strategy. I'm sorry, Professor Wu, but I, I think uh, we, we really need to, to focus a lot on, on, the, on the attributes from entrepreneurs to advance their, their research findings uh, to, down the social path. And, and the mindset is crucial here. And I don't think we, we, we focus enough on it. But, but when I go through the more than 500 projects we have funded uh, over the years, uh, there, there are two things I believe that stands out. Um, and one thing is, is, is belief. Uh, I mean, a successful entrepreneur, he, he or she will always uh, believe in their own ability to succeed. Um, they will believe in themselves, their research finding, their, their, their business and they will not be put down by anything. Um, I'm not saying here that, that they shouldn't uh, go out and meet uh, key opinion leaders, as I said before, it's, it's crucial that they do so. It's crucial that they understand the market because it, especially if, if you come from academia, you won't understand that. You don't know how to do due diligence. You don't know how to, to, to protect your IP. You don't know how to asset source. You don't know uh, whether you will be killed by existing uh, uh, producers out there if you don't have an IP strategy. Secondly, I think uh, a focus is, is a key trait that, that we need uh, to, to, to have much more focus with the, the entrepreneurial mindset. The key or the most successful entrepreneurs I have met, they, they, uh, they are extremely successful in mitigating risk. They, they have a clear path, they have a clear focus, and they will meet a lot of failures. They will meet a lot of pitfalls, but, but, but they always come through somehow uh, and, and I'm amazed and, uh, about uh, the way of mitigating those risks. So, so beliefs and focus are, are the two traits that, that I, I believe stands out the most. Belief and focus, okay. that's uh, well noted. Uh, I, I think uh, our time is sort of running out but I would like to have uh, one last question for you Stephen and afterwards more or less the same question for you uh, Chang. But Stephen, when looking at the Danish DNA, what do you think the world can learn from sort of the entrepreneurial mindset in Denmark? Ooh, that's an interesting question. I mean, I, I think entrepreneurship has some common traits that are not sort of bound by culture or, or, or nation. Uh, you, you need, as, as Mikkel said, you need this perseverance. You need to sort of against all odds, just believe in your idea and flow through. And, and that, I think is whether you're from yeah, uh, Denmark or China or Zimbabwe or Paraguay or wherever is something that is needed. So what, what can I, th oh, it's, it's a difficult question you're posing me. I think in Denmark, we are, we are quite sort of informal in our approach to things. We, we are sort of not very authoritarian. 
uh, or, or authoritarian may be the wrong word, but, but sort of not afraid of asking other people uh, for input help, even if, if, uh, if those persons are on a higher level or, or a different range or, or um, different place than us. So, so I think this sort of, this sort of ability to, to navigate uh, the world with, with a mindset that, of course, you need respect uh, for other people, um, but you also don't need to be afraid and intimidated by, by other organizations and other people, even though they may have a, a higher rank or, or a bit much bigger than you. And I think then Danish people have throughout history sort of been, been developed a, a skill set in, in being able to navigate this. Thank you, thank you. And in Chiang, what should the world learn from the entrepreneurial mindset of, of China? China. Um, uh, is there any uh, national characteristics you see in China that the uh, world could uh, benefit from learning from? Uh, you mean uh, what what what, uh, what can we learn from the collaboration uh, from? Uh, or maybe it could also be what is the Chinese entrepreneurs very good at? Okay, okay. I think um, the enter uh, entrepreneur in China is good at, I think, uh, maybe executive the idea. Um, I think they can uh, target the gap of the market and then uh, uh, find the uh, pro uh, find, find the proper investor uh, to uh, to enlarge their firm I think. I think thank you it also sort of stands out that the, the national characteristics might not be so important so maybe it's the, actually one of it's actually areas. one of the areas where our passport doesn't make too much of a difference and i think that's also a a beautiful uh, point to end at. So with those uh, with those words, I would like to thank you for joining this panel. And uh, I would like to hand over the microphone to Martin Hoxer uh, to give uh, closing remarks. And uh, I think we should give our panel a hand of uh, a round of applause while changing the scene. Thank you. A lot of things are happening now, I can see. Uh, maybe I don't get the podium. I'll stand here if that's okay. We just heard that Danes are informal, so, uh, so I'll stand here, but um, it's okay. Yes, that's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Honorable Sadat Chatterjee, Honorable Mr. Ambassador, Mrs. Wang Jianfen, Mr. Zhao Bojun, distinguished guests, partners, students, ladies and gentlemen on site here at the STC and online in both China and abroad. It's an honor for me to make the closing remarks at today's important and exciting events. The University Startup World Cup 2021 launch ceremony. My name is Martin Hoxer, and I'm the executive director of Innovation Center Denmark, part of the Danish diplomatic mission in China. At the Innovation Center, we have a focus on supporting commercial innovation, business partnerships, and research collaboration. And in all of these areas, applying new ideas is key to success. But finding the idea for success is not easy. And as a founder of a former startup myself, I can also say that failing is part of the journey. So you need help and support to go forward. 
That has also been echoed today. USWC allow university startups from around the world to come together to network, learn from each other, and remember what I said about failing and also what the professor uh, from Reykjavik, uh, Reykjavik said about failing. Grow and also pitch for a chance of becoming the world's best university startup. I'm therefore also very excited to be part of the implementation of the USWC 